This is uh, Mohamed Mandour, uh, the software director for uh, CIC and CIE team in Paleo, Egypt. And I have with me uh, Rami Saudi, who is a software manager for uh, CCC uh, team in Paleo, Egypt. Today we will be presenting this uh, uh, webinar for Towards Connected Car. We will highlight the, uh, some of the strategy of Valeo towards reaching uh, the autonomous car and the impact on this on the uh, connectivity of the car and the link between the car and the infrastructure. Uh, at the beginning, uh, okay, I will not, uh, I will not take too much time to uh, to highlight. Uh, what is uh, Valeo is doing for uh, you, uh, for any of you who doesn't know um, uh, about uh, Valeo. Valeo is a tier one supplier, a tier one supplier for supplying the OEMs with uh, many of the systems, either uh, under the hood systems or inside the cabinet or uh, full automated systems. And uh, uh, there is a link for some of uh, what is done by uh, by by Valeo, by Valeo on uh, the YouTube? If you search it for the YouTube in uh, in uh, Valeo, you uh, you will find a lot of videos for for this. Okay. So our mission in in uh, in uh, in Valeo is to reach uh, uh, fully and int int intuitive di driving, and this is coming by three main pillars, uh, which are the automated cars, safe, intuitive uh, HMI, or human machine interface, and for sure, the car connected cars. Uh, these three pillars will, uh, at the end, uh, make us reach a fully uh, value intuitive driving experience. And uh, at the end, as you can, will see that the car will be automated, the car will be connected, and uh, human machine interface will be also uh, a, a new human machine interface will also be required this is also to uh, um, be able to interact with this new uh, way of driving or mobility uh, business if we look at uh, the autonomous uh, driving they uh, they have identified the autonomous driving in uh, six steps the first step is non-automated or uh, usual cars, and then we go to assisted uh, driving, and then partial automation. Uh, after the partial automation, we go to conditional uh, automation, and then the high level of automation or fully automated, and then the full automation. From this, uh, these levels is reflected on car controls, driver interface, and connectivity as well. So. Uh, uh, I will. From, for car control, as you can see, for the non-automated, it is only uh, about alerting the driver. If we go to assisted uh, uh, driving, uh, which means that the car can help you in either longitudinal or lateral control. If we go to the uh, uh, further four levels, uh, the car can do longitudinal and lateral control at the same time. For the driver interface, uh, for the first three levels, you have to have permanent supervision uh, for alert and assistance. Uh, this is for the interface with the driver. Uh, and for the uh, fourth uh, stage, you have to have temp temporarily no supervision. And then the no supervision at level five, and at last level, the driverless car. So, if we uh, and and and, the, and uh, this dimension gives us more uh, about uh, how we we say if the car is fully autonomous automation which is can be driverless or can be uh, conditional autonomous which needs some temporarily uh, or uh, supervision from the driver So there is a borderline between the first three stages, which is a permanent supervision require, required by the driver, and the other three um, uh, stages, which is uh, either needs no supervision from the driver 
or uh, some temporary supervision from the driver. Uh, to cross this uh, borderline, there is some legal changes is mandatory and it is taking place in many of the countries right, right away. Uh, also for the second part which is longitudinal and lateral control we have to uh, there is a lot of uh, implementation of algorithms for fail safe mode and this covers all the systems in uh, the car now we go to the connectivity part oh okay before going to the connectivity uh, also for the temporary and uh, new supervision uh, there is a lot of, of, um, of work done on the human machine interface because um, if the car want to uh, to uh, to switch between the manual or the automatic uh, driver mode to the manual back to the manual mode it has to make sure that the driver is able to take control that's why um, a, a lot of algorithms and applications is necessary uh, for driver to, for monitoring the driver and the driver uh, status and is he uh, able to take control or not Okay, for the connectivity part, uh, starting from the highly automated, there is a lot of connectivity needed for the car, uh, either for the validation of the actions and also for the conditions that will be needed uh, and the information that will be needed for the car to be fully automated. Uh, this includes for sure the map updates and uh, traffic uh, updates as well. Okay, I think this is uh, gives uh, uh, overall uh, overall view of the uh, autonomous driving and the three uh, main uh, axes of uh, which is the car control, driver interface, and connectivity. Now we'll move to uh, the connected car, and the connected car, as uh, you can see, there is a wired connection, wireless short range, and wireless long range. These are the three stages uh, for connecting the car. For the strategy, we are uh, the first step in our strategy was uh, the LF, RF uh, communication and also communication uh, via proximity sensing between the car and the driver. And this is the first level of connectivity between the driver and uh, the car. And this includes uh, some applications and some products like uh, the remote keyless entry. So this uh, product is a key that can communicate uh, with the car either on uh, LF or RF and enable uh, the driver to get into the car uh, without uh, using the mechanical part. And then uh, come the PEPs or the passive entry, passive starts, which, ena which enables uh, the driver also to uh, start the engine and uh, drive without uh, putting the car in the ignition uh, as well or without uh, getting the key out of his pocket. The next level is uh, the connectivity with uh, two, 2G, either 2G, 3G uh, and GPS and this communication between the car, starting the communication between the car and the network. And for uh, for this we have some application like the InBlue which is a, a virtual key uh, system or car sharing system. We'll have a video uh, uh, after a while for, for this type of application. Uh, actually, we will have videos for a, uh, for uh, first stage and second stage and also the coming stage. Moving to the uh, uh, next stage, and uh, which is currently in, also in, in place, we, uh, we have a 4G interface and uh, the G5 communication for the connected car, and this uh, we, uh, we can reach here a fully connected car either uh, V2V or uh, V2X. Uh, V2V means vehicle to vehicle communication, which means that the car can communicate with the other cars uh, in the um, close, uh, close to, to them or to, to close to it or uh, vehicle to uh, infrastructure, which allows the car to uh, communicate with the infrastructure and either get information or uh, transmit uh, information to the infrastructure and updating the databases. Uh, 
this short video will uh, will allow show us uh, some example of the first uh, part which is the low f uh, low frequency and the rf communication uh, in this video From you can see that it is can be used by either a use or use some of hands or leg to open uh, the car Okay, uh, this was an, an, an example, maybe uh, we are all familiar with this uh, kind of application. It is the first level of con connectivity between the car and the driver, and it is uh, only for short range and with the driver himself only, either by the key or even by his hand or leg. Uh, for the next part, uh, with the, which is the telecommunication units, uh, which in, in, in includes a lot of, uh, of application uh, includes uh, e-mobility service which is uh, remote control of battery charging you can uh, remote control your, your battery for electrical vehicle remote control for uh, the air condition you can set the uh, air condition uh, temperature inside the car uh, before reaching your car uh, the second part is a vehicle, vehicle tracking system and uh, detection of an authorized vehicle movement and also the anti-theft uh, alert. Uh, there is a lot of, uh, of cars currently equipped with uh, this uh, system right now. And the third part is the comp related to the comfort and safety, uh, which is the crash notification, uh, breakdown call when uh, to the OEM or uh, assistance service or uh, to, to, to get some help for the driver. Uh, some display for vehicle speed remotely, uh, honking and flashing for retrieving the, uh, the vehicle, and uh, also for sure the statistics, st remote statistics, remote trip statistics as well. Uh, this is another uh, example for uh, application that you can access uh, some uh, functionalities in, in the car remotely. Uh, and this is one of the applications, the remote clean for you in this short video. You can see that the car is equipped with uh, in an ECU which enables the driver or the owner of the vehicle to con communicate with his mobile phone. to do the action of defrosting Okay, as you can see, uh, the, car, the driver could uh, do the defrosting before, before reaching the car and didn't spend much time uh, before uh, accessing his car as well. Uh, another application, or uh, if we go to the in blue mobility solution, this is a big solution that uh, can be uh, very beneficial for car sharing and also for renting uh, a car. In, in this uh, application, uh, the car or the vehicle uh, is equipped with in blue is uh, connected to a highly secured cloud-based platform, which is uh, responsible for sending and managing the virtual key and the encryption and uh, also security of the keys that is transmitted to the mobile and transmitted to the vehicle as well. And through this uh, highly secured cloud-based system, you can access using your smartphone uh, with the in blue application to request uh, a key and this key will be sent to your mobile phone and with this uh, you will be able to open and drive the car directly with your mobile phone once you reach it the way so this is an important application that can use in 
either in, in uh, sharing the keys or in renting uh, cars or any fleet management uh, application. Uh, this short video also will, uh, will show us the, um, the Influ, uh, the key sharing uh, application. So he is requesting from from his colleague to have his car, for, but his car his, his colleague is uh, left his uh, the work. Uh, so he will send him the car for. And then he can go directly to uh, the car. So without the communication, we cannot uh, we cannot uh, uh, such such application uh, couldn't be uh, in place because of the co communication between the car and the uh, high security uh, system, cloud system, and also between uh, the car and the Bluetooth uh, Bluetooth uh, chip in uh, the mobile. Uh, this is another uh, video also uh, for. Okay, it seems uh, we have some difficulty in, in running this video, but you can uh, you will find it in, uh, in the presentation under this link. And this video shows also another uh, application for the Moving Blue. The Moving Blue will uh, is allowing uh, the renting car renting companies or car renting companies to send uh, directly the keys to uh, uh, to the customers or the, the, the drivers. And they can uh, request this uh, over the phone or over the uh, internet using a mobile or using a laptop. And when reaching directly the garage or the parking, they can get the car without uh, any uh, need for someone to uh, hand them the key or so. I'm sorry that this one is not uh, playing, but you can reach this uh, video uh, on this link. Okay, uh, maybe I, I leave this uh, this uh, this graph to my colleague Rami, who will uh, be uh, describing the V2X uh, uh, architecture uh, for you. Okay, please. Okay, uh, hello everybody. So for this uh, uh, for this slide, we are describing the um, the current step towards a fully connected car, which is mandatory to have the connection between car and other cars, and also between the car and infrastru infrastructure. And uh, also, we have to keep the communication between the car and the driver. So uh, the aim is to have a full connectivity with all the surroundings of the car. So for this, uh, there are uh, several uh, communication protocols uh, currently under development to uh, describe the communication between the car and the car uh, using uh, automotive Wi-Fi. Uh, 
uh, which is uh, and also the communication between the car and the infrastructure to have a standard uh, kind of messages that are uh, understood by uh, uh, each car uh, whatever the uh, uh, car maker or whatever the car model uh, in this uh, in this communication we are exchanging a lot of information if the if the car have a breakdown uh, or some issue and it stopped uh, in, the, in the street this information is communicated to the other cars around to take the corrective action and also the infrastructure to uh, distribute this information around um, there, is, there are also other information uh, sent from the infrastructure to the cars related to the weather, uh, related to the traffic conditions and so on. Uh, the added value of having a, uh, such a V2X communication uh, in addition to what we had previously uh, using the different sensor, either front camera or uh, ultrasonic sensors connected to uh, different places in the car, is that uh, the V2X uh, see what uh, sensors cannot see. Like uh, for the main idea behind the, the sensors we have today in the car that we must have a line of sight. Uh, to see, for example, if we have an obstacle in front of the car or in the rear, or to see uh, what is around the car using the camera, so it must uh, it must have a line of sight to see that uh, obstacles. For V2X, uh, it's uh, extending or going beyond that because we can see, for example, uh, issues that happening when we are going in a curved uh, road or something like that. So. And also for uh, a long distance, it's not short like what we have with sensors. So here we have uh, several examples of applications based on V2X uh, communication. Uh, in this, uh, we, we will go through a small video that describe these uh, different uh, functions uh, with uh, some graphical uh, examples. This video has been done by the U.S. Department of Transportation. The following scenarios demonstrate some of the safety applications that can be enabled using V2B technology. The Emergency Electronic Brake Light Safety Application, or EEBL, can notify a driver of a hard braking vehicle in the path ahead. Three vehicles are traveling in the same lane. You are driving the last vehicle. You can't see the first vehicle because it's being blocked by the vehicle directly in front of you. Unexpectedly, the first vehicle slams on its brakes. Because of each of the communication... So here we will find that the first vehicle slowed down the speed. The second vehicle, the second vehicle uh, can detect that using the current uh, infrared sensor or front camera, but the rear car or the car behind cannot see that the first car had been stopped. So that's why here comes the added value of uh, V2V communication. In front of you. This warning will enable you to drive safely and avoid a potential crash. The blind spot warning safety application, or BSW, lets a driver know that there's a vehicle that may not be visible positioned in the driver's blind spot. Because of V2V communication, a blind spot advisory is issued to make you aware of the presence of this vehicle. Should you attempt a lane change with the vehicle still in your blind spot, this advisory will escalate to a warning, letting you know that it is not safe to change lanes. The Lane Change Warning, or LCW, is a safety application intended to provide a warning if the driver intends to change lanes into a zone that will soon be occupied by a faster moving vehicle traveling in the same direction. Using the data obtained through v 2 The following scenario provided, letting you know that the lane change should not so here this was an example of uh, lane change. There is a fast car coming in the other lane and that's why it gives you a warning. To warn the driver of a potential rear end crash with a stopped or slower moving vehicle ahead. You are driving over a small hill and ahead in your lane is a slower moving vehicle. The vehicle ahead is wirelessly sending its information, allowing your vehicle to provide a warning if you are approaching too quickly 
and or in a potential rear-end crash situation. This will enable you to slow to a safe speed and distance behind the slower moving vehicle. Now, consider that a vehicle ahead of you has, for example, run out of gas and it stopped in your lane. The vehicle directly in front of you makes a late lane change around the stopped vehicle. Even though you can't see the stopped vehicle because of VGV. So here we have an example of the car that uh, ran out of gas and it stopped in uh, at the side of the road and uh, the car behind can see that but uh, the next cars cannot see because it's uh, being blinded by the, uh, uh, the car in between. So in this, uh, we, we can get benefit from the V2X communication uh, to transfer this message to, uh, to, all, to all the cars coming behind so that they can take the corrective action um, uh, in advance to slow down uh, due to this stopped car. Your vehicle is aware of the stopped vehicle and provides you with a warning ahead of time so that you can safely slow your vehicle before reaching the stopped vehicle ahead. The Do Not Pass Warning, or DNPW, is a safety application intended to let the driver know that it is not safe to attempt to pass a slower moving vehicle because of oncoming traffic in the passing zone. Using V2V communication, your vehicle is continually looking for cars in your intended passing zone. If a vehicle is detected in the passing zone, a driver advisory is provided, letting you know that the passing situation is potentially unsafe. Should you attempt to pass the slower vehicle, the advisory escalates to a warning, so you can stop the attempted maneuver and remain in your lane. The Intersection Movement Assist, or IMA, is a safety application intended to warn the driver when it is not safe to enter an intersection because of the high likelihood of a crash with a vehicle on an adjacent approach to the same intersection from either the left or the right. If an intersecting vehicle is detected using v 2 v communication, a driver warning is provided if it is unsafe for you. So here we have an example of uh, in, uh, passing through an uh, intersection and uh, the, uh, there is one side of the road uh, is, uh, is not seen well due to a uh, stopped the car. So the, um, the driver that wants to pass the intersection had been warned by the V2X communication that there is a car coming uh, near to him. And it's not safe to pass. Now, imagine you are approaching an intersection where you have the right of way and cross traffic must stop. As you approach the intersection, the driver of a crossing vehicle fails to stop and continues traveling through the intersection directly in front of you. A warning is provided when the violating cross traffic is detected. This helps you respond in a timely manner and stop rather than continuing through the intersection and potentially getting into a crash. The left turn assist application, or LTA, is intended to warn the driver when making a left turn that it may not be safe to proceed because of oncoming traffic. You are approaching an intersection and get into the left turn lane prior to making a left hand turn at the intersection. As you release the brakes to continue through the turn, thinking the path is clear, a warning is provided indicating that oncoming traffic has been detected using B2B communication and it is not safe to complete the turn. Caution, oncoming vehicle. When the oncoming traffic clears, the warning goes away and the left turn can be completed. The safety applications and scenarios you have just seen are but a glimpse into the future of what may be possible when all vehicles can communicate and understand one another, regardless of make, model, so as you have seen in, the, in this video, there are uh, several cars from several models. That's why it's uh, it's mandatory to have this kind of communication in a little bit standard way to be understood by each uh, car, whatever the car maker. And it's also uh, being mandatory for uh, the fully automated car when we have such situations. Uh, while having a fully automated car in the street, it has to get the information uh, either from the other cars around or from the infrastructure to take the corrective action. So the, in this video, we have seen 
that um, uh, there is no, uh, let's say, active safety action or action taken by the car. It's just a warning or advising the driver for uh, for the needed action. But in the future, uh, for for sure, this will be connected to the active safety, active safety um, uh, application or active safety issues in the car to uh, to react and to take the corrective action. Okay, now we're moving to the other part, which uh, is the human-machine interface. And um, with this new uh, new type of, uh, of car, or, uh, uh, okay, I, I, I received, I just received the mod note that I can, uh, can uh, do the presentation in both languages. So, um, uh, مع التغير في ال, في ال business model بتاع العربية وشكل ال, العربية in the future, ده uh, برضو هيخلينا انه ال human machine interface او ال, ال, ال applications اللي جوه في ال في العربية في ال cabinet التعامل مع ال driver و ال passengers uh, is going to change او هيتغير برضو ف uh, moving from the knobs او المفاتيح العادية و LCD small LCD push buttons now uh, to uh, some overhead uh, overhead uh, uh, displays and touch screens and then to uh, some over overhead in um, in front of uh, of the driver either in a specific uh, shield or on the uh, shield itself dashboard uh, on the uh, windshield itself uh, uh, this is an, 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 a nice video for uh, augmented reality but uh, let me check if it will work. Okay, uh, I I, uh, I will send send uh, also this uh, this uh, uh, this presentation will be sent to you so you can also check this uh, this video which uh, uh, also include a lot of of uh, applications uh, and uh, a vision on how the way will be the changing the inside of the car. Uh, sorry that I cannot uh, I couldn't uh, run the, this uh, this video. Uh, but you, it, it is easy and found on. Uh, you can find it uh, really on the internet, and it is a very interesting one. Uh, the point is, uh, with the change of this uh, mobility uh, way uh, all over the world, the, the 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 shape of the car and the interior of the car will change. And also, it, it is not anymore a dashboard for the driver. It is uh, more or less screens for each of the passengers. And the driver may uh, be in short time, is not driving, so he will be interested in seeing other things uh, on the screen and uh, in front of him. And so as uh, now we are moving also to uh, what is called human machine interface server, which can be as a server for uh, graphics display and will uh, send uh, the graphics information or the display of information in uh, different screens 
and different uh, wind shields inside the core. Okay, uh, the next part, which is also related to the driver interface, which is a driver monitoring. And uh, as we, um, as you remember from the beginning of the presentation, it is very important for the uh, for the semi-automatic and uh, partially autonomous driving uh, to uh, to make sure that the driver is able to take uh, control again. Uh, after a, a partially uh, autonomous driving mode. So uh, there is a lot of sensors and cameras to uh, uh, aim to make sure that the driver is able to uh, take control again. And this includes uh, camera sensors inside the vehicle look, uh, looking towards the driver. Sensors are also measure the driver eye direction, eyelids, head position in order to make sure that he is uh, his attention is towards the traffic and towards the uh, road that he will be uh, taking over the action. Okay, now uh, this is also a nice video for the driver monitoring. Okay. Okay. Now we are coming to uh, uh, the last slide of conclusion. So uh, the whole mobility uh, model is reforming uh, all over the world. The vehicle will be more intelligent uh, for sure, more autonomous, and more personalized. And I mean by personalized that you can bring what your profile into your car. Your profile is, is, is uh, you have on your mobile will be transferred to your car. Even when you rent, go rent a car, you, the, this uh, profile will be automatically loaded to, to this car in order for you uh, to feel more comfortable with even uh, a car that is uh, first time to drive or to first time to get in. And to reach all these, uh, for sure, uh, the car will be uh, connected. Uh, this uh, uh, last video, I, uh, I invite you to, to look at it, uh, the Valeo Intuitive Driving version, uh, and it is also found on, uh, on the YouTube. Uh, you will have the link with the presentation sent to you. Uh, it also uh, show you how, how Valeo is seeing the vision for the intuitive driving. Uh, by this, I finish the presentation. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for attending, attending the webinar. And uh, we still have uh, about 15 minutes to take uh, any question or take uh, any uh, comments from, from you. Okay, there is a question. Will such high-level connectivity will be cost-effective? Uh, uh, for sure, at the beginning, or the technology uh, at, at its uh, beginning, the, it's still a high cost. But the analysis shows that uh, with the technology uh, being, uh, being uh, in all cars, this also will be uh, very cost-effective because you will uh, not need, the system will replace many of the tasks and will make uh, things much easier for people in order uh, to, to get the car. Okay. 
The second question is okay. What doesn't it mean longitudinal? Uh, longitudinal uh, means in the direction of the curve. Yeah. yeah. Uh, يعني in, in uh, either forward or backward of the of the car. Okay. The next question is uh, uh, this is going to work when we have a huge amount of uh, cars in the street so they can communicate and get and send the information to each other. Uh, for sure, this is the aim of uh, the V uh, the V to uh, to V uh, uh, protocol and communication, and it is also independent of the car maker. This is also uh, yes doable, and it is part of the protocol as well. Okay. The, what is the air interface uh, that V2X work on it? It is uh, a new standard called automotive uh, Wi-Fi. The last question I received is uh, can you explain uh, virtual reality and the card? Uh, actually, the, the last um, one of the videos in the, present, in the presentation uh, that will send to you uh, is containing what is meant by virtual reality. For example, for virtual reality, there will be, um, uh, if, you, if you have a GPS, and instead of following the arrow on the screen in front of you in the dashboard, uh, you can uh, see a virtual image of a car like presented as if, as if it is uh, in front of your car on the dashboard and you just fo need to follow this car instead of following the uh, the arrows oh yani let's me explain it in arabi and hatlaqi ka'anno fi sura al-arabiya tarasamat qadamak ala al-tariq آه وانت مطلوب منك انك تمشي ورا العربيه دي عشان توصل لوجهتك لو انت بت بتعمل على ال بتشتغل على الجي بي اس. اولسو الفيديوز اللي هتبقى موجوده هتوريك حاجات كتير قوي من الفيرشوال رياليتي اللي موجوده انسايد في الاتش ام اي برضه نيدد فور اتش ام اي جوه العربيه. Uh, in addition to that, the different pillars that are present in the car, whether it's on the driver or it's on the front windshield, uh, the car makers are going to replace the pillars with LCD. Because sometimes when you go uh, to turn right or turn left, the pillars deep to block the road a little bit, maybe there's someone who's going to go, and you're not seeing it. So the car makers are going to replace the car with LCD on the pillar. والال سي دي دي هتترانسميت الايمج اللي بتبقى تيكن من الكاميرز اللي موجوده على العربيه او ال 360 فيو فبدل ما البيلر موجود بيحجب الرؤيه عن واتس بيهايند انستيد هتطلع عليه الايمج بتاعت بالظبط از اف ان هو ترانسبيرنت اوجمنتد ريالتي ان داشبورد اور ان فرونت جلاس Augmented reality in 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 the front glass mainly, but also yeah, as Ima Rami just said, it is also on on the side of Ima Abu Al 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 Qa'il Al Awaim Bata Al Arabiya. Bardo, it is part of it. I think we we reached the end of 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 time and also the end of the questions I I received. Thank you very much for for attending this webinar. And uh, you will uh, definitely receive the presentation. And uh, if you have any other questions, you can uh, send it uh, to us. And we'll be gladly answering uh, you all. Thank you.